I'm speaking from personal experience here. Learn, learning languages for some of us is really hard. And so when we meet people like you who speak so many languages, I guess the first thing that comes to our mind is how do you do it? You know, like what do you do differently that makes you so successful at learning languages from the rest of us? What do you, what do you think some of the techniques that you use that are most effective that you could share with us today? Okay, I think that the most important thing is not to use, always use a textbook. For example, for learning Spanish, I used a textbook for one month. I gave mm. myself one month for studying like the basic grammar. Mm. And after this month ended, I was like, okay, I closed that book and I started trying to listen to some Spanish, to speak some Spanish. So like my, my trick is to speak from day one. You don't have to wait six months to start speaking the language. Otherwise, you will never speak it. Mm -hmm. Even though, like, you know, at the beginning, you cannot say, you know, complex things. But, you know, you can just use the things that you already know to construct a sentence, to put wow. words together. And then if you speak from day one, you will see that after, I don't know, three months, four months, six months, you can actually speak the language at a conversational level. Wow. Well, you know, let me ask specifically about Chinese characters then, because it's very different from any kind of Western script that we have. And if you are working for Huawei and you had this internship and you did your bachelor's degree in Chinese, certainly you must know many thousands of characters. Uh, this can be really challenging for some of us, again, me. Uh, so how did you memorize so many symbols? Okay, so basically these characters are made of radicals, no? So if you know the radicals, then, you know, it becomes easier for you. Like, even though you, like, you see a character that you have never seen, but because you know the radicals, then you're like, okay, maybe it might be like, like the, the meaning might be this, no? Mm. And also like when you're reading a book, you go for context. Like, for example, there is a sentence. It's not like yeah. you're going to just see one character. You're going to read like 20 characters. Mm -hmm. And from that, you can deduct that the meaning is, you know, <laughs> you, know you feels, can deduct the meaning. It feels like I think your brain just works better about this because when you say, oh, you're going to read 20 characters, I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's like looking at 20 Mo Monets and Rembrandts and trying to figure out how do they fit together in like some sort of, it's just, it's, it sounds really challenging. So what about, you know, there are other Chinese languages as well. And obviously your Chinese, your Mandarin, uh, Putonghua, right? Uh, it must be very, very good. But uh, what about Hakka or Cantonese? Did you dabble in those at all? Or when you, when you listen to Cantonese, does it sound similar at all to you to uh, Mandarin? Okay, maybe some words. Uh, can sound similar, but I have never studied Cantonese and not in, you know, other, just, just Mandarin. I've just studied Mandarin. I have never studied Cantonese, but of course I have heard uh, people speaking Cantonese yeah. because, you know, when you go to university, uh, Chinese people are coming from all over China, like from every places they are going to Shanghai to study there. So my classmates were actually from so many different places and they they had like different accents they had uh, also my professors you know so sometimes it's still challenging to to listen to someone who speaks uh one dialects dialect or yeah but you know it's normal well you what i'm assuming you watch um mandarin movies movies and tv shows or music uh radio show something uh entertainment is that really easy for you uh, yeah of course it's easy <laughs> i've been i've been watching tv series because i like watching more tv series than movies mm -hmm. uh since i don't know maybe four years mm -hmm. in the last four years i have watched like a lot Honestly, like in the last period, I haven't watched any because, of course, I have so many things to do. So it's not like I can always be there. And yeah, But I like watching them and it's easy because, you know, it's conversational level Chinese. It's not like, yeah, it's not difficult to listen to that. I was kind of surprised in this interview that you say that you studied international relations because I assumed you were like some kind of uh, language major. But uh, I've seen videos that you have about Arabic. Obviously, you are fluent in Italian, but you also talk about Japanese and other languages. Can you 
uh, how far when you decide I want to play with Arabic, right? How far in do you go? Like how many hours are you committing to that? Is it just for fun? Or is this something maybe someday I have a vision, I'm going to know Arabic? Okay, um, every language has its story. So for example, for Japanese, I actually have studied Japanese for three semesters in university. Wow. And I got at a basic slash intermediate level. Um, but then I was like, why am I studying this language? Because like at the beginning I was like, okay, I'm going to study Japanese because it's similar to Chinese in certain ways. Mm -hmm. So I was like, it might be interesting, you know? But then I, I don't know, I didn't feel the spark, you know, <laughs> it wasn't like, for example, with Chinese, I'm like completely in love. That's my language. It, that's mm. my favorite language more wow. than English, more than Spanish. Uh, but like for, for Japanese, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. And so it was like, okay. Then I, I asked myself a second question, like, do I want to go and work in Japan in the future? Do I see myself uh, traveling to Japan? Do I see myself working in Japan? And what I actually found out is that the answer is no, I'm, I don't see myself working in Japan. Maybe traveling, yes, but working, no. So I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Like, if I'm not going to live there, then how will I use the language? No. Mm. So I was like, okay, you know, let's not do it because it's also difficult. It's not like an easy language that, mm. like Spanish, for example. Since I'm Italian, it's like easy to for me to learn uh, Spanish, mm -hmm. but Japanese is different. Like, if yeah. I don't go there, then I get no chance to practice it and to use right. it. Well, in 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 Italy. Or I guess you're living, you said, you mentioned you're living in Budapest right now. So in these European languages, do you find that a lot of uh, other Europeans who can't, who speak Spanish, who speak uh, Italian, who speak English, who you can practice with? And also, do you find a lot of people who speak Chinese in Europe? Okay, so right now I'm working for Huawei. So I'm okay. working for a Chinese company. Yeah. And so... Of course, I speak Chinese every single day. My boyfriend is Chinese. Here, there are so many Chinese people. Like, mm -hmm. for Chinese, it's not a problem because you find Chinese people everywhere. Wow. For Spanish, yeah. For Spanish, it's a little bit different. Of course, you cannot find, uh, like, Spanish people everywhere. But Spanish is, like, pretty much, like, it's easier to maintain as a language. Mm -hmm. Because it's easier to study. So if you if today I want to reuse uh, Spanish, it will be like, okay, yes, I know this. And it will be like before. For <laughs> Arabic, it's um, Arabic. I have never studied Arabic, actually. But I want to study it one day. So I'm, you know, I'm really fond of the language and I want mm. to study. It. So I am continuously looking for, you know, <laughs> uh, things about uh, the Arabic culture. I'm continuously listening to some songs and so i i did this you know video where i talked about arabic uh, can i ask you some really you know you it seems like your advice for learning languages is like oh you know you just read it in context but can i ask you flashcards or anything like that lessons one-on-one -on -one lessons or uh, for those for us mere mortals uh what kind of what can we do to advance our game so i guess your first tip let me reiterate back to you is to start speaking as soon as possible but are there other tools in your toolkit that you use as well okay so for flashcards sometimes like in the past i've used flashcards but i don't mm. think they're working for me mm. because like after i don't know how to use that word you know so like it's a word in, you start it, you have it in your brain, but then it's like, okay, but yeah, how do I use it? So what I do is actually to write a lot, like wow. since the beginning, you know? Yeah, like I study one word, then I just uh, put it in a sentence and I try to make m many sentences with that word. Just to understand how do you put it, how do you use it. Yeah, and of course, I, I also use a lot of podcasts. Like, for example, Duolingo has a podcast. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that it's like half in English, half in Spanish. No, So it's actually for beginners. It's not like a podcast where, you know, someone is speaking with complex words. No, it's actually pretty much... Uh, easy to understand. Wow. You know, that kind of reminds me of the Pimsler 
course where you listen and repeat and listen and repeat and listen and repeat. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, so Shanghai specifically has an unusually large amount of foreigners for a Chinese city. It has the most, I would say, the most international, let's put it that way, city in China. So certainly there are a lot of foreigners uh, from various countries all over the world living in Shanghai who don't speak uh, Putonghua, Mandarin, very well. So um, when you're there... And you speak Chinese fluently. How would you say your experience as a Chinese, a fluent Chinese speaker, was different from some of the other expats who only spoke their the language of their home country? I think it was pretty much different because, like, through the culture, uh, through the language, you can actually understand the culture. So, for example, I have tons of Chinese friends, and mm -hmm. of course, I have also some foreign friends in Shanghai, but I still prefer staying with the Chinese. Mm. And this gives me like uh, another perspective of, you know, seeing China. And also like if you can speak Chinese, you have more opportunity mm. when, you know, it comes to work, for example. Mm. And also, for example, if I'm in Europe and, you know, I just graduated, it's not like I have 10 years experience in marketing, 10 years experience mm. in that. No. So I have no experience. I'm in Europe. And I'm looking for a job. And so many people are also looking for a job. But since I can speak Chinese, you know, this is something that distinguished me from them. Like, mm -hmm. this is something that makes me stand out, you know? Uh, so this is like, and you know, like so many Chinese companies are here in, in Europe, for example, like uh, Xiaomi or like um, Huawei or Jingdong. Like, there are so many Chinese companies. So I think like people that can actually speak Chinese, mm. they can have more opportunities to to integrate also, you know, to integrate mm. in China. Because like Chinese people, they can speak English, but it's not like they can speak it fluently. And maybe after, hello, how are you? They will just cut off the conversation because they don't know how to go to the next topic. And maybe they are shy to speak English because they cannot speak it well. So mm. I think this creates like barriers. You know, mm -hmm. a barrier between you and them if you cannot speak Chinese. Well, I think that's great advice. So for foreigners who are considering coming to China, learning Chinese is going to help them advance their career faster is what essentially one of the pieces of advice that you're giving. I want to ask you about your travel. You study Japanese. You know Spanish. What other countries have you traveled to? To what countries have you visited, even if it's just for a few days as a tourist? I have visited Dubai, so I will go for cities, okay, not countries. Mm, sure. sure. Um, so Dubai, yeah, China, and then of course in China I have visited so many cities, like maybe thirteen, like Hangzhou, Suzhou, Shanghai, Harbin, uh, Dali, Xi'an, oh, I mean. Beijing. Uh, so I have visited like quite a lot of places in China. Then in Europe, I have visited three cities in Germany. So I have been to Munich. I have been to Nuremberg, Cologne. Then I have been to Prague in the Czech Republic. Uh, of course, I have visited many places in Italy, like Florence, uh, Pisa, Milan, Rome. And then I went to London, uh, Bratislava in uh, Slovakia and uh, let me think okay of course Budapest <laughs> yeah you I, I, so you didn't go to Japan at all no 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 that's why that's what I was saying like I want to go to Japan for travel mm -hmm. like for living there it's like okay no maybe I, I'm not going to live there like never in my life because you know I'm like when I was 17, I was so open to go and live abroad. I was like, wow, that's so exciting. Now I'm 23 and things have changed a little bit. I want to be more close to my family. Mm. Um, so yes, if I have to leave like far away from them, then it's because it's worth it. And that's, mm. you know, for China or maybe Dubai that is like closer. So I, I would like to to work in Dubai, actually. Wow, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I, I think it's my second 
uh, most favorite uh, you know city in the world to buy and then yeah so it's not like i'm considering japan because it's like far away and it's interesting because you mentioned dubai and shanghai are two of your favorite cities in the world and these are two of the most technologically advanced futuristic kinds of cities that are on the planet so you really like living in the cutting edge of metropolitanism like really advanced cities it sounds like yes <laughs> where you know everything is competitive if you want to know more about how how I learned Chinese in eight months, then you must watch this video.